So you join me here on Pacific Storm and I'm trying out a new loadout in the Zero. This is a plane that I've played a lot in, many people have if you've been enjoying Pacific since it launched and vehicles are one of the few things that I can still actually have some fun in since the massive TTK changes. I'm one of those players that really doesn't like changes in games that are unnecessary. Sure, I do like learning new things and new weapons are great, but when DICE make massive changes, whether it's in Battlefield 4, Battlefield 1 or BF5, I do get a bit annoyed, so I go back to what I know and what can be fun. The planes in BF5, whilst they're not perfect, on the Pacific at least, can be quite fun. And I've altered my loadout a little bit with this Zero to kind of get rid of those incendiary bombs and go for something a little more effective against enemy armour. Now, as you saw at the start of this video, I do like to start out by clearing a few enemy planes from the sky, as I feel like I'm doing my team a disservice if I don't. But then, I use these bombs to cause mass destruction on the flags. These are the £532 dual bombs for this Zero, and trust me, they are effective. I've been having so much fun with them against enemy tanks, and I'm flying like a bit of an idiot as well, slow strafes, getting low to the ground, exposing myself to fleeting faust. I don't really care. Sometimes I just like to relax a little bit, don't try hard, and just make use of some really strong loadout choices. Pacific Storm Breakthrough is what I'm playing here. It's probably the best experience that you can have in the air on Battlefield 5 right now. There are lots of servers up, and to be honest, it's one of those maps where you're going to have a lot of infantry and tanks on the ground, but also a bit in the air going on as well with three planes per team, so you're always busy. Sometimes when I play Panzerstorm or something in the plane, it's a bit boring, unless you're in a bomber, because there's not always stuff to take out. Fiel is another good map for the planes, but for me, the Pacific has a mixture of everything, which is why people love it so much. The planes are also way more interesting. So I wanted to create a loadout that could do more than just take out infantry players, and considering the sheer number of enemy tanks that the attackers can get on Breakthrough, especially on Wake Island if you've ever played that, having an anti-armour build was really appealing to me. Not only that, but since the 5.2 update, DICE have changed a few things with the plane combat, meaning the old loadout I always used isn't now the best. You can't chain drop those incendiary bombs anymore, so they're not really as strong if you're trying to drop two on one location. These 500 pound bombs though are very effective and also you'll notice in third person now you have the little reticle, meaning it's very easy to land bombs on the target. Another tank taken down. I'm telling you, this is very effective and even when I missed the tank and didn't hit him with both bombs, the splash damage seemed to be very, very effective and I would still get myself a big hit or a kill. Flares are still really important with this loadout, and getting the balance right is something that I found a little bit difficult when I drop back to play in these planes. One of the things you have to do is kind of drop the flares before you do a run, because you can't drop them and then benefit from things being spotted. It doesn't quite work that way. And if you're flying as low as I am, you're probably going to get Fliegerfaust, and even though the Fliegerfaust has been nerfed a bit, you probably are going to get taken out. Here I've got a plane on my tail, just trying the slow down and weave side to side. Hopefully he gets bored and flies off, and it worked a few times in this match, which is pretty cheeky, but whatever. Sometimes when you get somebody behind you in Battlefield 5, there's not really much you can do to loop back around them, but you just have to deal with it. So again, the 20mm explosive cannons are what I've chosen for the primary infantry farming weapon they are still really good not as good as they were before but they are strong uh, i think really what you need to be doing is locating enemies when you're flying away from the flag you, you want to really work out where the enemies are loop back round, fire your 20 millimeter explosive cannons early see if you're getting hit markers how many people can you hit take down work out where the clumps of enemies are then do as much damage as you can on your approach, drop your bombs as early as possible and get back out of there. You don't really want to be getting super close to the ground, if I'm honest, even though I do it a fair bit in this video. So here we go, another strafe towards the ground, spotting enemy players. Again, that one was a good set of bombs, using that third person reticle directly on that tank's face, and then straight away I'm back to base to resupply. When I use the incendiaries, I think what I'd do is drop the incendiaries, obviously pick up some hits because they would burn for quite a while, 
drop my flares and then go for another run with the 20 mils until I run out of them, then go back to base. But with these bombs, I like to resupply them straight away. There's always armor to take down. And sometimes, like you'll see in a second, the tanks do get stranded. And I've been in this situation as a tank where you're in the water or you're just kind of stuck behind some infantry that are shooting you and the last thing you want is a plane coming down. That's what you want to be doing. Perfect. Taking that guy down. And that was a good potential thumbnail there as well. You'll notice something in a second though as I get into a dogfight with this enemy plane. You are not invincible in these planes. And I make a mistake of trying to slow down chasing this enemy plane. Which is not what you do. You want to keep all your momentum. Because otherwise, this happens. Certainly not ideal, but with the Pacific, you do get lots of planes. So I'm straight back up in the air, looking out for enemy targets. Dive bombing these people. Bang. Another two kills, another tank taken out. Every single run you can do this, it's super effective. And I'm telling you, as an infantry player and somebody who's played a lot of infantry in Battlefield 5, I've really tried to up the amount of infantry I play in Battlefield 5 to enjoy it, or at least try to. Having tanks taken down, especially tanks that sit back out of Panzerfaust and Piat range, is just a godsend. It's amazing to have this happen. I know for a fact a lot of plane guys really focus a lot of the time on infantry, maybe just on enemy planes. They don't focus on armor. And with the Pacific not having the heavy bombers, armor can just reign supreme. But trust me, this plane, if you're looking for a loadout, even on the Corsair, to be honest, it's on both the Zero and the Corsair, this will do damage to enemy tanks. One of the biggest complaints I do see on the Pacific maps relates to the plane farming. Infantry players are especially vulnerable to strafing Zeros and Corsairs, and now the Fliegerfaust has had a much needed nerf in my opinion. It's not really as attractive to take, so there's not as much anti-air. The AA guns are really good, but unless you're working together in the sky with maybe a fighter trying to help out your team, you're not going to have that much luck taking down enemy planes. The problem is obvious though, it goes beyond the balance, it's just down to map design. It's really open, these Pacific maps, just look at Pacific Storm, how open this map is. You've got some trench networks, you've got the odd bunker, but really it's not enough to protect you from the oncoming onslaught of an enemy plane with 20mm cannons. There's not really too much you can do to get away from them. There's no sound on the bombs that drop towards you. You're pretty much always spotted, and there's not just one plane shooting you, there's three. Not a great experience, if I'm honest. So if we take a look at the specializations in a bit more depth, I'll pop them on screen in the top left for you. We've got the Corsair here, and there is a slight difference between the Corsair and the Zero, but I'll show you that in a second. So, the 4 times 20 millimeters explosives, that's what you want. The full-blown canopy for visibility is something you have to take because field repair sucks. And that gives you access to the 2 times 500 pound bombs on the US side, or the 1,000 pound bomb if you want it, but then you can't take the flares. Flares for me are really good, but anti-tank mines are fine. Quicker resupply is fine. That second to bottom tier does give you a few options, so there's not really an issue there. When it comes to the Zero, again, go for the 4 times 20 millimeters. The LMGs are okay, but 20 mils are where it's at. I then choose the center again on row 3, with the finned barrels because I definitely don't want field repair. And here is the slight difference between the two planes. The Zero actually has the 532 pound bombs, whilst the Corsair has a 500 pound bomb. So does it make a massive difference? It might make a little difference to tanks, but also on the left, we don't have a thousand pounds. We only have 800 and whatever it was, 840. So I guess with the Corsair, you go for the thousand pound bomb. With the Zero, you go for the two 532s makes more sense again i like flares and then i go for the improved maneuverability there is a difference between the two to be honest i don't think it's a massive difference i just think it might reach a break point on a tank maybe you can one bang a tank with the 1000 pound bomb but you can't with the 800 pound bomb i'm not really too sure i'd suggest though going for the two times 532s on the zero a really solid choice so you're just looking in the background at me trying to escape from an enemy plane. I don't know if you've ever seen this before, but if you try and land your plane in the water, sometimes you'll float, you lose all momentum, and it's very difficult to take back off. It happens all the time to me, especially when I'm trying to evade someone who's on my tail, and I'm going to die. 
So, I might as well try something. Slow down as much as possible and then bounce on the ground and take back off. It does actually work surprisingly well. And I got away with it that time. Just in time for another quick resupply. Reload. And then an effective strafe on all these players. I like to get as much height as I can as well. You see that? Now I can see the entire map and really pick my targets coming down from above. I've spotted that tank. He is going to die. Don't you worry. This is where the tank is so vulnerable. Place it. Bang on him. Boom. He explodes and so does a guy sitting next to his tank. So let me know what you think of this build. Have you used it yourself? Is it something you're going to try out? I'd like to do a live commentary at some point with this sort of stuff, but it is difficult playing, getting a good game and a decent commentary in the background, so sometimes I jump on, get a game when I get something that's interesting with a new loadout, just make a little live commentary, if you like, over the top of the recorded gameplay and show you what I like to do with this effective loadout. Those 532 pound bombs are just, they're a game changer really against all these tanks and you should definitely try them out. Thanks for watching, if you did enjoy, leave a like down below and I'll catch you in the next episode.